Right, so what I've done is, I <coughs> found out what the problem was. So I disabled part of the code that I shouldn't have done in order to make it so that I could get back. So this is working purely on interrupts. Okay, the main routine, as you can see, is just a loop which outputs. And we've got an ISR here for the space. Okay, which runs a function called do space because I was going to do something else with it. And that's do space. And then you've got a timer, uh, which is that's the ADC one. Oh, there you go. No, it's not. Where is it? There. So that's that's a timer, right? Which is after the space, it fires this. Okay, and then it does the mark, right? And up here, this is the, the triggered by the sensors. So this starts a space, okay? And do spaces up here, okay? And this then sets up the tar timer for the mark. So this then completes, and then it then does a mark, which is from the timer. So it's entirely interrupt based, and that's what we've got here. And we can, see? We can't alter the mark at the moment. What I can demonstrate if I turn it down a bit. Okay, what I can tell you, I can show you, is that it does work because as you put your finger on it, you can see how it's demanding more, basically. Okay. It's a bit rough. I need to clean it off. If I take it up a high speed, there we go. I don't know why it keeps stopping like that. Because it's nothing to do with the serial port. But now if I put my finger on it, you might see it go brighter. There we go, see? So it's not perfect. Okay. And what it is basically is, as the magnet passes one of the sensors, it then fires an intro. Oops. I'll turn that full. That's better. Okay. It fires an intro, right, to tell the processor that this has moved, okay, and then that then fires off the sequence to change the um, um, field coils, you see, so to move it along, and then it does a, a, a space followed by a mark, and the mark is still variable length, and what happens is that the mark, the space is timed, it's a preset length, and the mark basically is set until the next one fires, you see, so as it moves from one to another, You've got a space followed by a mark, and then this fires an interrupt, you see, and so on. And obviously it's working quite fast. <laughs> so the interrupt based one works, it just sounds like it's a bit of a... It works quite well at low speeds. And what I've done is the mark does still shut it off sort of thing, you know. So we can... I'll just bring the mark in. And now you have to move it because... There you go. <laughs> You have to move it because it's when it changes the sensors that it actually triggers a whole sequence. Of course, I need a mechanism in there to make it so you can start it. But basically, that's that. Okay, and so I can now. Okay. And it's not a perfectly pure tone anymore. But at least the torque is correct and it's using interrupts. And what we're getting from this is we're getting an output. Of what we, of what's happening, you see. Now I don't know if that is actually interfering with it, and I'm guessing not because the interrupt takes precedence over printing out that text, you see. And so the interrupt will fire and do the service, and then it will return and finish outputting to the USB, uh, to the, well, that's a USB, but serial. So that's telling us, like I can change the mark, for instance. There we go, let's turn it off. There we go. And it's varying a bit because of the noise. See? So it's showing the differences. So I can now, I can shut it off and let it spin down. And just as it's getting to the lowest point, kick it back in again. You see? So there's promise there, it's not perfect, we have to work on it a bit better, but it's, uh, we'll still get it accelerating.
you know, it's just there's a little bit of an issue with it slowing down. And what I need to do is, the no there was two things that I wanted to implement. The first one was a statistical algorithm for these, so to smooth out what the pots do. And the second thing is, is that it's supposed to know the sequence, you see, so it'll lock it to the sequence, so it knows what, you know, when the next sensor is supposed to, which is the next sensor. At the moment it's quite dumb. All it does is it, it picks up the sensor value and then sends the appropriate pattern to the uh, field coils. So it could be anywhere and it wouldn't know. And so that's why it's getting out of sequence. So I need to put in something there so as to make it so that it sequences it, so it knows the sequence correctly and it'll know where it is, which is part of the sort of software flywheel that I'm going to incorporate into it so it knows and that'll lock it in then and that means when you turn in the controls when you, when you turn the controls that it will then know what, you know where it's supposed to be and how fast it's going because the moment it doesn't you know it might as well just be this <laughs> in that sense. <laughs>